Hello, welcome to Maths with Jay. So we're going to integrate by parts. So let's write down the formula for that. So if we're integrating the product of u and dv by dx with respect to x, then we get uv minus the integral of v times du by dx dx. Now usually we choose u and dv by dx so that the integral of v times du by dx is simpler than the original integral. Now in the example we've got here that actually won't happen because if you think about it whether you integrate or differentiate e to the x well it will stay the same won't it? And if we integrate or differentiate sine, we end up with plus or minus cosine. So in this case, it actually doesn't matter what we choose as u and what we choose as dv by dx. But you'll see how this will work out. Now we do need to work through using this formula twice. And I'm going to choose u1, so I'm taking u1 because I know we're going to use the formula twice, the second time around we'll use u2, so we're using a subscript of 1 here, and I'm going to choose u1 as sine 2x. So it doesn't matter what you choose here, the reason I'm choosing this is to avoid having fractions, because I know that when I differentiate this I'll get a 2, whereas if I were to choose dv1 by dx as sine 2x and integrate sine 2x, I would get a half coming in. And it's just easier to work with whole numbers rather than fractions. But the whole thing will work out. OK, so we're going for u1 is sine 2x. So that means I've got to take dv1 by dx as equal to e to the x. And for the formula I need to differentiate. I need to differentiate u1, so that gives me 2 cos 2x, and integrating gives me that v1 is equal to e to the x. So let's just shrink that down to make this uh, easier to do. So integrating this gives us, well u1 is sine 2x and v1 is e to the x, so multiplying them together it's better to write the e to the x at the front so that it's clear that we're only finding sine of 2x. And then we're going to subtract the integral of e to the x times 2 cos 2x. So simpler to take the 2 outside the bracket and then we're integrating e to the x cos 2x dx. So you can see that the integral that we've ended up having to find is almost as bad, well in fact it is as bad, as the one we started off with. So what we're going to do here is we're going to first of all call the original integral i1 and then we'll call the second integral i2. In other words if I put i2 in here you can see that i2 is equal to the integral of e to the x cos 2x dx. And let's call this equation 1. Now what we're going to do is apply the integration formula again. So integration by parts again will give us the following. Now it's really important here that if you have chosen that u1 is sine 2x, that you take u2 is cos 2x. Because if you were to choose e to the power of x, you would end up, well, basically just showing that the integral is equal to itself. So it wouldn't actually give you the answer. So having made your initial choice, whatever you chose you want to be, u2 should be the same sort of thing. So because we chose the trig, function earlier on, we're choosing the trig function here as well. So we've got u2 is cos 2x and dv1 by, sorry, dv2 by dx is e to the x. So differentiating gives us minus 2 sine 2x here and integrating gives us that v2 is e to the x. So now working out 
our second integral. Multiplying u2 and v2 together gives us e to the x cos 2x. And then we're going to subtract. Now we're going to be multiplying together negative 2 sine 2x and e to the x. So let's take the negative 2 outside the integral and then we've got e to the x sine 2x inside. So what we end up getting here is, well the first term isn't going to change. The minus negative will become plus and then you can see that the integral we've got is the integral we're trying to find. It's our i1. Yeah, we're trying to find the integral of e to the x sine 2x. So if you look at what we've got, if we now call this 2. So equation 1 gives us i1 in terms of i2. And equation 2 gives us the second integral in terms of the first. So in fact, we finished integrating and all we need to do is a little bit of algebra, substitute one of these into the other, and we'll be able to find the actual integral that we want. So let's write down what we want to do. So because we want to find i1, we're substituting 2 into 1. So looking back up at what we had, we knew that this was equal to e to the x sine 2x minus 2 times i2. So now let's substitute in i2, which is e to the x cos 2x plus 2i1. So you can see now we only have one unknown, the integral i1, and that's what we're trying to find. So we just need to do a bit of multiplying out of brackets, taking everything, taking all the i1s onto one side, and we'll be there. OK, so let's multiply this out. So first of all, the e to the x sine 2x isn't going to change. And then we're multiplying out the 2 by what's inside this bracket. And then we've got minus 2 times plus 2i, so that's minus 4i1, I should say. And then if we add the 4i1 onto both sides, we get 5i1. And that's equal to e to the x sine 2x minus 2e to the x cos 2x. And remember that once you don't have an indefinite integral on one side, you do need to add on your constant of integrate, your constant of integration. So let's call that k. And then we're just about there. All we need to do is divide both sides by 5. And we've got our answer. So now let's write down instead of i1 what it is. So we've got e to the x sine 2x oops, equals, now we're dividing both sides by 5. And while we're doing it, we can also see that the right hand side, apart from the constant, has got an e to the x in both terms. So let's take the e to the x outside the bracket. So we're dividing by 5. So inside the bracket, we're going to have sine 2x and then minus 2 cos 2x. And then you could either write plus k over 5 or, more simply, just put c for your constant of integration. Now you may like to see what would have happened if we had taken our original u1 as e to the x instead of sine 2x and dv1 by dx sine 2x, remembering that when you, when you get onto the second use of the formula, you would use u2 as e to the x again, and then dv2 by dx as cos 2x. And you should find that you get a very similar answer.